Okay, so we will move into our work session this evening, a, a brief conversation about the Canby Adult Center building this evening. So um, as the council is aware and many in the public are aware, uh, the Canby Adult Center has reached an agreement to um, move uh, the Adult Center um, and whatnot to a new location here in Canby. Uh, we believe that this is probably going to take a couple of years still to complete, um, but uh, I would, in conversation with Eileen, um, we wanted to kind of vet some of the pieces or questions that may be um, on the council's mind that staff can start working towards um, getting answers to. So, so basically, like the big questions that I've been asking of, of Eileen and staff is, you know, what are we based on the fact that that was a, a block grant? What does that mean for any changes that that would occur? Are we still obligated to follow that block grant because considering how many years it's been? Um, does it and what if we do, what does that space need to be or have to be? Um, and then it led into other conversations about just what do we do with that. <clears throat> that space anyways, um, you know, we own the building, but not the dirt. Again, that ongoing conversation. So that's really what tonight is in terms of conversation about the adults, uh, the adult center building is just that, like what questions do we have that we want answers to so staff can start working on that uh, over the next coming month and year. The only thing I'll add to that, Mayor, is that I learned today that um, there are a couple of land use actions that are going on um, in relation to um, the relocation already. So there's, I'm sorry, there's already what going land, on? I'm sorry, land use actions. Okay. So um, the Canby um, United Methodist Church is working on a lot partition. So there's parcel one and parcel two. The United, the Methodist Church is keeping parcel two. They're selling parcel one to the Canby Adult okay. Center. So that lot needs to be split. The other thing that is happening is that um, a conditional use permit for locating in an R1 zone has to be given as well. So, um, so those are two actions that are happening currently. Currently, okay. Right. Um, but the rest of it is just what do you all want us to look into? What thoughts do you have? You just heard the news on July 17th. And so you've had a couple weeks to think about it if indeed you have. And really that's, you know, in the time that we have left, that's all I want to do is just kind yeah. of do some brainstorming. So. Yeah, you know, there's no, we're not looking to like make a decision on <clears throat> what we want to do with the building now. It's, there's still time, but that time. Yeah will go by really quickly. So yes, Councilor Davis. Well, just nice wait, up, by the way. thank you. Uh, so just what you've already asked or mentioned, what can we do, yeah. you know, uh, because we need to have that, that answered, uh, you know, as far as what our options are uh, with that block grant, uh, as far as the usage and things like that. The other part would be, uh, I think it's part of a bigger picture too, that, uh, we need to continue to work with the school district uh, to see about purchasing that property so that uh, then there's no questions that we don't put a lot of money into the current adult center building. Uh, and so uh, my want would be to have the city administrator continue to work with the school district and look at the purchase of that, in, that entire property. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I emailed Eileen a few weeks ago. Microphone. Sorry. Thank you. Probably going to get a text from Gordon now. I got it on now, Gordon. Um, <laughs> I emailed her as well as, um, I think I included Jim on the email because he's the Parks Liaison. Um, just the, uh, now that we have a new school superintendent, I feel like this is a good time to reopen those conversations about that property. And um, so I'd like to flush that out. And as we already mentioned, find out what our limitations, restrictions, or benefits are with the block grants. Also, we need to discuss the allocation of ARPA funds. That's right. Yes. Because we gave them five hundred thousand dollars for their kitchen upgrade and um, such. And I'm thinking that if we wanted to 
um, we need to re we need to rethink that. I mean, obviously, that five hundred thousand dollars shouldn't follow the entity; it should stay with the building. But if we wanted to have a discussion about a neighborly gesture like we did with Cub, then that would be discussion we should have. You may recall Kathy's request was that it go with them as opposed to staying with the building. So, right. Just want to remind you that she did make that plea. Yeah. Councilor Patton. Uh, for me, <clears throat> I've been putting some thought into this and, and going back to my, I have some serious concerns and reservations regarding those block grants. I was on the council when this all came up originally back when it was sort of let the cat was let out of the bag that we actually rent that from the school. Um, and I remember the city attorney at the time who was not Joe, it was, well, now I forgot. John, John Kelly. John, John Kelly, Kelly had essentially said that if we left that building and did not either designate another facility in the city or build another building that would serve that sort of purpose, that we would have to pay all those block grants back. So I am 90% sure that that would be a thing. Um, <clears throat> I also agree that we need to sort of look at that $500,000. And to me, when that $500,000 was offered up, it was for the building to make the building acceptable to the adult center so that they would be able to run their operations through there. To me, those, even if the adult center leaves, those that facility still needs to be updated. So if it becomes a community center, a youth center or whatever, then that money needs to go towards making those updates. If we decide to do some sort of parting gift or whatever from them leaving the building for the years that they had used it, that's another thing. But I am, I am pretty stuck on that that money needs to go towards those updates to that building to make it acceptable. Um, Regarding purchasing that school property, I agree that it, it with the change in uh, leadership over there it would be good to bring that back up. And I know that they are using that building for some school activities. And as uh, this is an idea that just sort of popped into my head as we've been talking about this, it might sweeten the pot a little bit if we say, look, we know that you are currently using that building for certain things. We have no interest in leveling the building anytime soon, uh, but we could maybe work into the agreement that classroom space or whatever that they would need to use in that building for those activities would they would still have the ability to do that. Whether it is at a very reduced rental fee or whether it is a set number of years at no cost or whatever for a certain amount of the building. But then the city would be able to use like the gymnasium facility and things like that for community activities. So I, I, I guess my I need a clarification piece that the school district uses the adult center. No, the school no. district uses the building, Academy the school oh, building. Oh no, that I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, so I would be looking if we're going to talk about at the buying whole... the thing. I'd love to get the whole kit and caboodle. Yep. The, okay. the school building. Mark this date down. This is something we agree on. Right, the school <laughs> building. I doubt that they would give us the fields behind it because that goes to the other school. But like a strip from our park, like what the Thirteenth Street or whatever that park is there. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Legacy, Legacy, Park. Legacy Park. Okay, so all the way the street frontage to the building, and then the the land that the adult center and the pool sits on, and buy that whole thing and say, hey, you guys aren't using it. You haven't been using it for years. We can make an agreement with you that you know when that you can still use that building for what you're doing uh for the for a set period of time and see if that might be something they would be interested in well again i try to keep us in our box tonight with just talking about the sorry the i might have gotten a little ahead no of myself. you did but that's okay because <laughs> many of us have been having that conversation now for yeah several years of the the what could be um if everyone came to the table and we had a conversation about it because i think you and i were just talking about that today as well so mm -hmm. um so yeah no i i agree there's still a lot of options and i know that there's already been you know i i'd, I'd like to know from yeah pr primarily what what are we held to by the grant by the block grants and then what are our options so that we can sit here and start you know um discussion mm -hmm. and, and 
visualizing what could be for that building. I mean, it mm -hmm. could, you know, if it's the adult center piece is not in that building, does it become a teen center? Then it be, that opens up a whole nother can of worms in terms of conversation and what, what does that look like if it's, you know, um, Eileen shared that there's possibility is that ex office, ex you know, um, training space or more office space for, um, you know, the pool or whatever. Is there some way to tie that together uh, in that regards? I don't know. Again, we need that big piece first of what is the block grant. Um, you know, what are we handcuffed to in that regards? But are there other detail pieces that we need to know or want to know? Yes, Councillor Stearns. So first, I want to know of these block grants. I assume they were to build the the the, the center right that we're talking about. For, that I, to I think build they did. it. Yes, yes, to build it. And so, whether that was that a perpetual um, restriction on those funds? That's what we need to know. That's, and that maybe that's a question for our esteemed legal counsel whether those um, ever expire. Um, so I think that piece of information mm -hmm. needs, needs to be known. Second thing, I as a as a as a policy matter, I'm hesitant to just give large grants to organizations that are not the city because that's what's supposed to be city funds for the city. Um, so, you know, if the $500,000 was for refurbishing the building, then I think that's going to stay there at the building because otherwise what we're doing is we're picking and choosing our charities when well, it's a good charity to choose, I think, but it's, you know, there's lots to pick from. And then there's, you know, we choose that one to give a, Five hundred thousand dollar grant too, and not another nice worthy charity in town too. And I don't know if, if that's really something that we as a council need to be doing. Well, if I can respond to that, um, just the the purpose of the ARPA, the um, I can't even think of what ARPA stands for right now, but um, but the council uh the council did make um appropriations to various community agencies so mm -hmm. it wasn't just the yeah. um can be adult center there was appropriations made to the utility board the fire district the fairgrounds so those have all been made already um so just so you know or are reminded mm -hmm. yeah councilor sassy mm -hmm. i um I agree. They probably shouldn't get the whole 500. I um, maybe half. Put 250,000 in the building. <clears throat> I don't know if we need to put a big commercial kitchen in that building, and we don't know what it's going to be. Maybe have have it in reserve. Um, I'd like to see Kathy get a little. They do a lot for the community. They do. And let's not forget what we did for uh, the Canby Center a few months ago. We really knocked them down a lot for their fees. So let's not forget that either. Mm -hmm. Great point. So, mm -hmm. yeah. any other thoughts, piece, questions that we want answered right now that they can staff can start planning and working on? I guess the only thing I would add to that is, in the, and I think it just to make sure it's covered is that if if it turns out that the block grants are a thing, and if we decide to walk away from the building and say, "Here you go, school. Now it's all you." Um, if if it turns out that we can't do that without paying a bunch of money back to the state or whoever it came from, what do we need to put back in that building to satisfy that money? Is it we work with a you know YMCA to turn it into a YMCA? You know, do we just say hooray? We now have a community center and reserve whatever. Uh, you know that sort of thing. What what are the what are what do we have to call that building? What activities have to be in it in order to satisfy those that, those grants? It seems to me that that's the big question to get answered mm -hmm. first, and then mm -hmm. we'll have a whole bunch of subset questions depending on what we can do. Yeah, this feels uh, like a series that, of work sessions to me. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely a series of <laughs> work sessions. Be. So, and I will say I'm super jazzed that. The adult center has worked this out with the yeah. Methodist Church. I was no, a member of the church, mm -hmm. and the kitchen facility is beautiful. What a lot of people might not know, and I love sharing this fact, is that all the ovens that are in that kitchen are Hasidic ovens. So they're made so that they can stay on 24 hours a day and not turn off automatically. That safety feature is out of them because when we would do the pies there, yeah. they, we would essentially bake pies from like five o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night. 
And so she, they will be able to bake everything they want for as long as they want, and it won't wow. be a problem. You know that, that's great. Okay. I mean, does that kind of at that's least perfect. give us first couple of steps? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. Okay, great. Um, then I will uh, end our work session here this evening. Um, we're gonna take a quick break so that councilors and the mayor can get water, do what we need to do, and we will get going here shortly. Talk amongst yourselves. Not too much. Starting at Start 10. At no, I'm just kidding. We're going to get going here in three, two. Uh, good evening, Cammy. Welcome to the regular city council meeting for, gosh, August 7th of 2024. If you please stand for, uh, I think, the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. I got to get caught up on my agenda here. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for this great community. Uh, thank you for this great weather that we've had all summer long. Uh, it's hard to believe that summer is almost coming to an end. Um, I ask for prayers for this community, um, for our first responders that have been dealing with so many different um, things, both on our police front and our fire front. Um, please protect them, keep them safe, bring them home every night to their families. Um, please look out at look over our community and continue to bless our community the way that you have. And I ask this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is new employee introductions. I mean, do we have any, we don't have any new new employees. We have several several recruitments in progress, but no employee introductions tonight. Okay. Yes. Uh, next up is the opportunity for citizen input and community announcements. If you are wishing to, or this is an opportunity for citizens to address the city council on non-agenda items or make announcements. Uh, of events or things that may be going on in the community. If you are wishing to address the council, there's yellow cards back there behind Mr. Johnson on that podium. Please fill that out and bring that to our city recorder and she will make sure that I get it. Um, we will do our best to address the issue at hand during the meeting. If not, um, then I will work with the city administrator to uh, find a resolution or answer to the question. If you are wanting to dial in and zoom in for uh, citizen input, please reach out to our um, city recorder, um, sorry, or the assistant city recorder by four o'clock on the day of our city council meetings. So um, I have one card and that is uh, Mr. Johnson wants to talk to the council about remote work. Mr. Johnson. I would forget what I wanted to say, so I have to go. And I will read it. Okay. Um, uh, good evening to all on the dais. Um, COVID became an issue in the U.S. in 2020. Many businesses reorganized the pandemic uh, by allowing employees to work from home. Office workers began to be called back to work in the fall of 2021 and on into 2023, but yet here we are. Canby City Hall allowing employees to work from home and continuing the hiring practice, posting for jobs that still contain the option of remote work a possibility. This is a job, not a vacation. People need to return to work. What did employees do prior to COVID? They adjusted their work schedule to fit the circumstance. It's time for employees to return to work at City Hall. They are public servants, after all, and get paid quite well. For those that do show up, thank you. You are asked to do your job and cover for those who aren't there to do theirs. Since the onset of COVID, we have increased the amount of administrative full-time employees from 52 in 2020 to 63 budgeted for 2025. Of that, the numbers at City Hall grew from 13 in 2020 to 18 for 2025. 
we should be asking ourselves, are those numbers going up because of mismanagement of the workplace, allowing employees to work remote with no accountability? You continue to add heads to office staff and ignore those boots on the ground that are required to show up every day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, appreciate that. Um, I know that this has been a conversation that council has been having and, um, and I know that that is something that our city administrator is aware of and monitoring uh, on a regular basis. So thank you. Um, Maya, is there anyone via Zoom land that wants to make any comments? There is not. Okay. And we'll move into the consent agenda this evening. Mr. Mayor, I move. I move to approve the consent agenda that includes the minutes of the July 17th, 2024 City Council regular meeting, the appointment of member Tina Schemp to the Traffic Safety Commission with a term ending June 30th of 2026, the appointment of member Kathy Smith to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board of Members with a term ending June 20, or sorry, excuse me, June 30th, 2025, and the appointment of member James Riker to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board with term ending June 30th, 2027. And also the approval of the distillery OLCC application for art type. I'm probably saying that wrong. Located at 181 North Grant Street. Great, thank you. And then Councilor Padner, the second. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Okay, motion has been made by Council President Hensley and seconded by Councilor Patton to approve the consent agenda, which include the July 17th, 2024 regular city council meeting minutes, appointment of member Tina Schimpf to the Traffic Safety Commission with a term ending June 30th of 2026, appointment of member Kathy Smith to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee with a term ending June 30th of 2025, Appointment of member James Riken to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee with a term ending June 30th of 2027. And then approval of the distillery OLCC application for archetype located at 181 North Grand Street. Uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That passes 5-0. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, moving into item five, which is ordinances and resolutions. Uh, first up, item A, uh, consider ordinance number 1627, an ordinance adopting the housing needs analysis as part of the City of Canby comprehensive plan. That's second reading. So do we, anything new, Don, or any, Don, would you mind coming up here to the table? You're here, we. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please come up wanna, to the I don't table waste to your say? Time, Don. I want to make sure you get up to the front here. <laughs> to say there's nothing going on. There there's no. Update. Is there nothing? Is there anything new from the last meeting that we need to be? No. Um, everything uh, that we spoke about, everything that we discussed, is the same. We are still asking for your approval. Um, this is an important milestone for the city. Uh, this will allow us to um, do the urban growth boundary expansion. Uh, including the residential acreage specifically. Uh, this is much like the economic opportunity analysis piece that was adopted um, before that. This is the other half of that. So I uh, highly encourage you to approve this. Um, there's other housing elements that will be coming forth to the council as well. Um, they're premised on the housing needs analysis as well, but I would highly encourage a vote of approval tonight from uh, the council members. So those of you viewing at home and here in the audience, so yes, we're in the middle of Camby's in the middle of redoing its comprehensive plan, and so this is a, a facet of that, and it really broke down what we are needing in terms of various housing needs over the next you know, 10 to 20 years here in the city of Camby, so crucial that this part be approved, and we've spent a lot of time dialoguing um, about that need piece, so... Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. I move to adopt ordinance number 1627 and ordinance adopting the housing needs analysis as part of the City of Canby Comprehensive Plan, TA 23-03, CPA 24-04, or one, sorry. Second. The motion has been made by Council President Hensley and seconded by Councilor Davis to approve ordinance number 1627, 
in ordinance adopting the housing needs analysis as part of the city of Canby comprehensive plan 23-03 uh, backslash CPA 24-01 roll call vote. Councillor Patton? Yes. Or I. Councillor Davis? Yes. Councillor Stearns? Yes. Councillor Sassy? Yes. And Council President Hensley? Motion carries 5-0. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, item B is consider our ordinance number 1628, an ordinance authorizing city administrator to enter into the appointment agreement with Captain Doug Kitzmiller for second <clears throat> reading. Eileen is our- Kevin. Kevin? Yeah. I was gonna say, you need to call him up too, he's here. Good hey. <laughs> evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, here for the second reading, no changes to the employment agreement. And this is basically, you're retiring. From PERS. Yes. Correct. Okay. And it's a contract back with the city. Yes. Correct. Great. The Hotel California deal. You can check out, but you can never leave. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance number 1628, an ordinance authorizing the city administrator to enter into an employment agreement between the city of Canby and Captain Doug Kitzmiller. Second. Never a dull moment in the city council meeting. <laughs> Uh, motion has been made by Council President Hensley and seconded was it you, Councilor Stearns? Close, oh, Councilor Sassy, uh, to approve ordinance number 1628, an ordinance authorizing the city administrator to enter into the appointment agreement with Captain Doug Kitzmiller. Uh, roll call vote. Councilor Patton? Aye. Councilor Davis? Aye. Councilor Stearns? Aye. Councilor Sassy? Aye. And Council President Hensley? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Doug. Next up, uh, item C is ordinance no, uh, considering ordinance number 1629, an ordinance adopting the comprehensive plan, transportation system plan, and urban growth boundary scope of work and budget for fiscal year 24 25. Also, a second reading. We'll call back Don back up to the table. Don, all right. <laughs> Okay, Don. This is the same information that you previously had at your last uh, council meeting. Um, again, we encourage you to approve this tonight. This will allow us to continue our work on the comprehensive plan, transportation system plan, and urban growth boundary expansion work, um, which is a multi year process. And um, just uh, maybe just a point of more information as this continues. We also submitted uh, the grant, which you approved in your last council meeting uh, for transportation uh, growth management grant uh, for ODOT, which would be the conceptual planning that would start uh, fiscal year, next fiscal year. So um, that will soften some of the costs here, but for this fiscal year, we would encourage you to continue to uh, approve this uh, so we can continue our work um, going forward. Okay. Mr. Thanks, Mayor. Sir. Yes. If I may, I'd like to move to adopt ordinance number 1629, an ordinance adopting the comprehensive plan, transportation system plan, and urban growth boundary expansion scope of work for fiscal year 24-25. Thank you, sir. A uh, motion has been made by Councilor Patton and seconded by Councilor Sassy to consider ordinance number, considering approving ordinance number 169, an ordinance adopting the comprehensive plan, transportation system plan, and the urban growth boundary scope of work and budget for fiscal year 24-25. Also a roll call vote. Councillor Patton? Aye. Councillor Davis? Aye. Councillor Stearns? Yes. Councillor Sassy? Aye. And Council President Hensley? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Uh, next item, uh, item D, consider resolution number 1418. A resolution adopting updates to the Clackamas County multi jurisdictional natural hazards mitigation plan. And Jamie's going to come up and present this. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, tonight before you, you have resolution 1418, which is a resolution adopting the city of Canby's addendum to the Clackamas County natural hazards mitigation plan. 
Um, this effort is a multi-jurisdictional effort, um, and it's overseen by the Oregon Department of um, Emergency Management, Oregon Partnership of for Disaster Resilience, as well as the University of Oregon's Institute for Policy Research. And um, the last time that this plan was before council was in 2018. So this is just an update to that information. Um, the National Hazard Mitigation Plan um, identifies natural hazards, such as earthquakes and fires, as well as mitigation efforts, as um, uh, processes that we could tap into, funding um, that would be available. So by having this plan up to date and approved by resolution, um, that means that should there be a natural disaster, which we all hope that there isn't, uh, that we would be able to access funding or, or programming. Um, and it also, you know, provides jurisdictions with benefits that range from, you know, reduced loss of life, loss of property, um, reduced, uh, reduced costs associated with recovery and construction, reconstruction, and then, as I said, the, the grant funding. Um, the plan was reviewed by the Oregon Department of Emergency Management and FEMA and was pre-approved pre May 29th. So once this is um, adopted by resolution, um, should you choose to do so tonight, that will go back to them and be included uh, and, and go into effect. Um, and then as far as the outreach, there was a form formal comment period, which began March 6th of 2024. It was distributed by news releases, updates to the city website, and then direct emails to local agencies, local nonprofits like the Canby Center, for example, that has the ability to provide services to um, the community should there be a disaster. Um, and then also other city of Canby departments. Um, I worked with uh, Chief Tro as well as Jerry Nelzine on this, these efforts. Um, and, and we did our best to kind of reach far and wide to make sure that our community partners were aware of the plan and, and that the update was underway. Great, thank you. Questions for Ms. Tickle on this? Yes, Councillor Stearns. So you say there's an update of the previous plan. What are the changes or updates? Or do you, do you know they'll summarize them? Or? Yeah, most of it was just reassessing, you know, the facilities. If, if something like, for instance, the, the city of Canby, the city hall has received a generator and other buildings have received generators. So reassessing the facilities, not just that the city of Canby owns, but that are within the community that are able to serve in a, in a natural disaster. One of the things we took into consideration, for example, was the multi-use building that's gonna be at the Clackamas County uh, Fairgrounds and Event Center. Um, and then a lot of it was just, you know, bringing information up to date, uh, utilizing the comprehensive plan work that uh, Don Hardy and his team has done. Um, some of the, the mapping and, and those kinds of GIS mapping to make sure that all of the items are up to date. So if there's a disaster, you can pull this plan off the shelf and that it had the most up to date information as far as 2020 or 2024 was concerned. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councilor Davis, did you have something? You're ready for a motion. Uh, I am. If you have no other questions for for Ms. Tickle, then yes, I will take a motion. Okay, move to adopt resolution number 1418 of resolution adopting the city of Canby representation in the updates to the Clackamas County Multi-Jurisdictional Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Yeah. A motion has been made by uh, Councillor Davis, seconded by Councillor Sassy to approve resolution number 148-1418, a resolution adopting updates to the Clackamas County Multi-Jurisdictional Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan. Any further discussion or comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks Jamie. Uh, next on the agenda is um, item 5E, resolution 1419, a resolution adopting the budget, making appropriations, and, uh, and imposing and categorizing taxes for the 2025 fiscal year and this is actually a little bit of housekeeping cleanup from the budget process that scott so eagerly ran to the podium to talk to us about so scott <laughs> you must be presenting <laughs> i am well great uh, well, good afternoon got... or good evening uh mayor and council uh the resolution before you is uh in short um something that the oregon department of revenue requested um 
the bottom line to this is simply they would like to have the appropriations combined into one document just to be shown as one sum total. Um, they gave us the option of basically having in the minutes um, for this amendment the counselor sassy to abstain from the vote because there would be enough votes for it so he would be able to just abstain from the entire piece of it and it would still pass and they would be uh, fine with us having send the amended amount in as it's shown in this second uh, res adopted resolution if you adopt the resolution this is really just like you said housekeeping so once we get this approved everything there's no problems with our our taxes um, that we sent into the county for collections this is just basically department of revenue requesting in one document so and we are like not we, we are not incurring any um problems with the department of revenue with our budget adoption just correct yeah. yeah no there's no 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 problems with this whatsoever this was in correlation with myself and with one other person at department of revenue making sure that all of our i's and t's were crossed for this amendment okay mr doofman you have your hand up sir yes thank you mayor so just two things one i wanted to i guess reiterate scott's uh uh advice to have Councilor sassy uh recuse himself from the vote and not vote just to just to reiterate that to make sure that's clear uh and the second thing is i kind of want to take some responsibility for this uh it was you know talking with eileen uh beforehand and kind of explaining how when these issues come up uh, our offices had consistent advice to do what we did. Uh, and it never would have occurred to me that having two resolutions instead of one would have been an issue. So to the extent that there's any frustration on uh, the council's part, uh, you can you can look to me for that. So I just want that to be clear. This was not a staff issue. Well, I appreciate that, David, very much. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments on this at all? No, we're pretty clear that we're just doing some tidying up mm -hmm. of that. So were you ready to make a motion, Jason, that we were pointing for? No, I can, though. That's oh, fine. I uh, wasn't calling you out, but no, that's good. Jason, I'm I'm I can make a motion for this. I would love to. Thank you. Uh, I move to adopt resolution number 1418, a resolution adopting 1419. Oh, am I on the wrong page? Well, look at that. I'm doing my job and I'm sucking at it. So let me just get to <laughs> 150. Bam. OK, here we go. Uh, I move to adopt resolution number 1419, a resolution of the city of Canby amending and the adopting, wait, amending and adopting the annual budget, making appropriations and imposing and categorizing taxes for the fiscal year 2025. I will just sure. let you know there, sure. are, there are two thes in there. That's not on me. <laughs> Motion has been made by... Councilor Patton, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> if we want to call it, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, Councilor Patton, and second by Councilor Davis to approve resolution number 1419, a resolution, a resolution adopting the budget, making appropriations, and imposing and categorizing taxes for the 2025 fiscal year. Any other questions or discussion at all tonight on this? No. <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 4-01. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that concludes item five, ordinances and resolutions. Uh, item six is old business regarding the city attorney recruit recruitment, which I don't think we have anything at this time on that. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is mayor's business. A uh, couple of things. Uh, so, Tuesday was, which is yesterday, was the chamber lunch. The uh, reason I bring that up is because the August luncheon is usually uh, one very well attended and it's at the fairgrounds. So they spent a lot of time talking about the rodeo and the fair um, coming up in two weeks. Um, but the big thing that was really a highlight was, and I, and Ms. Tickle was just talking about that, was the new building. So they are building. Uh, right now it's a gigantic tent um, and so once the fair is over that tent will be coming down and they're going to start breaking ground on their new building 
um, which will be climate controlled. It, uh, it'll have uh, tremendous air scrubbers. It's going to be very much a top of the line building with the intent that if, again, we go through a wildfire season that we had a couple years ago, that both livestock and uh, if people need to can be in the building at the same time. Um, and so next year's fair will be a little bit of a challenge because they won't have that tent and the building won't be done yet. But um, it's going to be a huge undertaking, but a great project when it's done. And so um, so if you when you see that going on now, you know, now you're in the know of what's happening. So I want to thank the chamber for allowing uh, the uh, event center director, Brian Crow, to speak at the, at the luncheon. It's been He's done a great job and there's been a lot of really great things that have transpired there at the uh, event center. Um, I had a tour today of the Canby Beer Library. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of work done here in the last week or so on that project. Um, Bryce Morrow gave me the tour and laid out. So the uh, refrigerator, the extra large refrigerator is in. All the uh, coils and things for cooling coils are all in and ready to go. Um, they poured concrete for the bar. It's going to be like a polished concrete uh, serving bar. They will be bringing in uh, wine barrels and whatnot, which they'll be using for their aging process. So they're in conversation with Mr. Morrow today. They're hoping to be at a point where they will be able to be mostly open for Camby's big weekend. So um, when talking with him about just some of the hangups and things, um, a lot of it was the undergrounding. They have to, with the water and sewer and grease traps and all that stuff, it's taken a lot of time to cut into concrete and um, get those things laid. But uh, yeah, they were, there was about 15 guys on the work site today cranking things out. So um, I did talk to him about, they had ripped up the ADA apron right there on their corner. And he said that they will be pouring and building that to the new standard um, for that, that intersection. So we won't have to go back through later and hammer that out and redo it to meet the new um, state requirements for the ADA ramp. So, um, so good things to come on that. It's pretty exciting. Uh, Monday evening had a, a Region 1 Area Commission on Transportation meeting. A lot of that was a discussion on two big pieces. One was, uh, again, continued conversation on the budget shortfalls um, for the Abernathy project, the 205 widening, and then the I-5 uh, Rose Corridor project. So there was a lot of conversation um, about that and that uh, the legislature is going to be looking at again with tolling being paused. What is that going to mean for uh, down the road and what are those going to other sources be? And unfortunately, some of the funding they are pulling from future STIP, so state transportation improvement projects. So those are projects that have already been approved and funded and they're going to be going back through and pulling funding from those projects, which will either postpone or eliminate those projects for a period of time um, to come up with the funding. Um, and so that was a, a big crux of the conversation uh, on that meeting. Uh, I will have a Clackamas County coordinating uh, update at the next meeting, um, unless, were you able to attend Council President Hensley? I was not, I was okay. preparing to leave then, town as well, I'm sorry. Then that's okay. I was I going to watch that. it, but I've only been home for a day and a half. Um, <laughs> Same as you. And then earlier this month, sorry, in July, I uh, attended the Oregon Mayor's Association Conference and two big things to bring up uh, or share with you all with all the uh, hot air that was going on in the room was one, the conversation about the Supreme Court's ruling on the grants pass piece um, so that that will be circling back uh, in some regards. Um, and so we'll be looking at what that's going to look like, I think. Um, there's still some things to be worked out in regarding that. Am I correct, George? Yeah, so, um, but it was a big decision, but there's still some work that needs to be done. And I think uh, it impacts, basically it impacts Oregon differently than it does the rest of the country. 
um, because um, of how the law was written here in Oregon. Um, so there's still some things that we are going to be held to um, in regards to like the urban uh, camping and things like that. So more to come on that. And then the other piece, which Alina and I talked about yesterday, was um, the park image. I'm going to totally butcher the word uh, indemnity. Um, so there was another ruling. Uh, so the case recreational is, immunity. Recreational immunity. Thank you. That's what it is. Um, so there was a lawsuit of a uh, an individual sued the city of Newport because they were injured walking to the beach, and so they were suing the city of Newport for not maintaining the trail leading to the beach. And so um, they were claiming that recreational immunity did not apply because they were going to the recreation point that wasn't recreating. And so that's um, been ruled on and basically sent back to uh, the lower courts and to the states, in our case, Oregon, to figure out. So there's a extension of the uh, recreation immunity until the July 1st of 2025. So that's something the legislature will be looking at. And I think that's something that we will need to be watching and prepared to talk about what that's going to look like for us in Canby if that holds in place. So those were the two really big things uh, I wanted to bring back and share from the, the mayor's conference. So um, it's fair week in two weeks. I know we have a meeting Next week on Monday. Oh my gosh, is it next week? Yes, it is. I thought it was next Monday, 13. Sure. I'm off a week. Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday we don't have a council meeting. That's the first time in a long time. Yeah. So go to the fair. We'll have some funnel cake, yeah. eat some corn dogs. Um, yeah, they. we have 55 uh, cha uh, champions, cowboys, coming into town for the rodeo. So um, it's definitely going to be a very busy uh, night in, in Canby. So um, they were saying, come to the first couple nights, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, are the big big nights for the big Cowboys to be riding. So Friday and Saturday are already sold out. Friday and Saturday are sold out. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be a great event. So um, not only will you deal with 99E traffic, you'll deal with fair traffic as well. So we just <laughs> want to make it a big adventure for everyone coming through Canby. Uh, this summer. So that's all that I've got. And we will move into uh, Councilor comments and liaison reports. And I'm going to start with Councilor Sassy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Heritage and Landmark met and uh, we finally had a quorum. Good. So we got five months of meetings done. And then uh, we talked about the camp training. Um, those out there that have that's a commission assistance mentoring program, and that was well attended. The re reconnaissance level survey is finished, so that's done now. Mike. And we have a seven member panel. We still need three people for this particular, for this board, yes. So if we could get three more applicants, that'd be great. And that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Councilor Stearns. I don't have anything to say this time. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Councilor Davis. Okay. Uh, Park and Rec. Um, the uh, last meeting we brought up about holding a work session with the Park and Rec Committee, and I just wondered how that's doing, if it's been scheduled yet, Eileen? Uh, it has not been scheduled yet. Okay. And, uh, it has not. No. I think it's going to be a good opportunity for the city council to meet with the park and rec committee and talk about projects that are coming up and new projects that they uh, would like council input on. Um, the uh, Maple Street Park, if you haven't been past Maple Street Park, the turf is going in. It's pretty much in, in the infields and stuff. They're doing a great job out there. Uh, so it's on schedule and looking really good. So it's a big improvement over at uh, Maple Street Park. Legacy Park, the exercise equipment is going in. Uh, should be done by the end of August uh, to actually put the exercise equipment in. 
Uh, we are just waiting on a few glitches with the contractor and, and then that's been taken care of and Jerry's moving forward with that. And Auburn Farms is uh, moving right along as well. Um, the uh, fire department um, big announcement is that uh, Matt Dale has signed his contract uh, to start December the 16th as the new fire chief for Canby Fire District. Um, I'm very proud of Matt. Uh, he's been my deputy. Uh, and when I got to Canby, he was a company officer. And uh, so he's Earned, his, earned this position, uh, well qualified and will do a fantastic job for uh, the fire district. I will bring him here to introduce him and uh, so you guys can have the opportunity to uh, meet Matt uh, officially as the new fire chief. I do want to compliment Chief Charo in regards to the touch of truck uh, that happened uh, yesterday down here. Uh, it was fantastic, a uh, lot of people uh, but Chief Tro uh, helped organize that and bring together all the entities, uh, including farm equipment mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. And we had a lot of kids oh, cool. uh, that showed up for that. So good job, Chief Tro, uh, in regards to organizing that. Uh, the fireworks, of course, was a complete success. And I'd like to also thank Gordon, uh, who uh, did some drone work there. And we're probably going to put that on our fireworks site on the on the Canby Fire District uh, Facebook site. Uh, but it's uh, well done uh, okay. as far as the drone work. So if people have missed it, uh, you can go on there and actually see the drones uh, work that uh, Gordon did for the uh, fireworks show. So compliments uh, to Gordon. Um, the Highway 99, uh, I do want to uh, compliment Key, the contractor who's doing the work out there uh, and also uh, the patience of people that have had to deal with Highway 99. But the contractor, every time we have approached him, uh, that company with access problems for emergency services, uh, they've made the changes uh, very quickly, including as of yesterday, we had a lot of problems getting on to Highway 99 and Pine. Uh, we had some critical calls that we had to get to. I made a phone call and they had flaggers there this morning. And so every time we approach that intersection now, they have flaggers that move the barriers and everything else for us to get across. So I can assure people uh, the contractor has been working with emergency services, police and fire very well, and uh, we have very seldom been delayed due to the Highway 99 construction. Good news too is with the fair starting, uh, Pine Street will be done, mm -hmm. and they've expedited that uh, so that we can get across, uh, which is going to be good for the fair. Uh, so <laughs> Pine Street will be opened uh, at the time of the fair. So that will help out uh, quite a bit. So good job to the uh, contractors. And I did have an opportunity to attend the chamber luncheon. Uh, well attended, a lot of people uh, that were there, probably the largest group I've seen yeah. attend the chamber luncheon. Uh, and. Uh, Brian Crow is doing a fantastic job over there as the director. Um, and I also attended the safety briefing for the fair last night, well organized by Brian, and uh, incorporated all public safety as well as all the fair attendants, uh, the vendors and things like that as far as safety for the fair. So we really encourage people to come to the fair and have a good time. Great. Thanks. That's it. Council President Hensley. Thank you. I don't have a lot this time, but um, I also went to the Touch a Truck event. The National Night Out is actually what it was. Touch a Truck was the theme. Um, so good job on that, uh, Chief Tro. It was 100 hats, 100 little yellow um, hard hats that Rhonda got from the Public Works, for, put little stickers on them so they could, 100 of them, they were all gone, and then kids were still coming. So it was a very well attended event. Um, and it wasn't terribly hot, so we thank the good Lord for that. Um, I also went to the chamber luncheon. A lot of things that have already been said, but I did want to also mention that Audrey and Robin, who have served the chamber and our community for many, many years, are both 
separating from the um, chamber and going on to other adventures. So I wanted to thank them for all their hard work and contributions to our community. And that is all I have at this time. Great, thank you very much. Councilor Padden. So a few things. Um, first, before I get in, I just wanna say, you know, I always appreciate citizens coming forward and sharing their thoughts. And I know that the hybrid work model that the city has is a lightning rod issue. Uh, but I just want to say that I strongly disagree uh, that the employees that are taking advantage of um, the hybrid work model are using those days as vacation days. Uh, and I, quite frankly, am a bit offended on behalf of the city staff for that insinuation. Um, but moving forward, I just want to say I'm bummed out that I missed the uh, chamber luncheon. My work schedule has been a bit chaotic, so I usually try to attend those. I was actually in town, so I, I'm bummed out about that. I will also apologize to the community for not being at last time, the meeting the other night. Um, American Airlines decided that uh, I was not going to be in the proper state of mind for such a thing. So uh, it was best. I'm I'm pretty squirrely and, and and wild. Normally, it would have been a barn burner of a night if I had have actually chimed in. So uh, so I apologize for that. Um, as far as liaison reports go, um, the um, uh, CAM Utility Board continues to move on uh, forward with the water treatment facility information and the plan and, and, and their progress with that project as people watch that in the community. Um, and the Planning Commission, uh, thank you for all of your hard work and moving the housing needs analysis forward to this group and, and really vetting that out. We, I greatly appreciate it and I believe that all the Canby community and folks up here on the dais do as well. Um, I will also, I also attended the touch a truck event. I don't want to add more work to the plate of the chief, but I think next year we could go bigger. Uh, I think the, I mentioned something about a combine. Maybe we can find a combine. Uh, I think someone mentioned food trucks. Oh, possibly getting in some food trucks and stuff and really and really touch uh, a food truck there we go better well move, i mean to actually venues. be serving food i mean oh yes like have a food truck okay, but gotcha. that too um but yeah so i think i think it'd be cool if we uh if we were to to really, really that was a really cool event there was some tears there was a little boy who came down out of a forklift and i think scrubbed his knee and so hopefully, you know, we don't get sued for that, but we'll see what happens. Um, we've, and got, then we've got good insurance. We do, yeah, there was, the, was Band-Aids galore. So, um, and then the last thing, as you know, I am, I am on the uh, Willamette Falls Landing Heritage Area Coalition. Um, <laughs> I had recently been um, appointed as the Projects and Programs Chair which I had reported on. Well, apparently because of that, they were like, you should also become a member of large of the executive board. So now I am currently a member of the coalition's executive board. And uh, we're looking forward to moving forward with our legislation uh, in the very near future to um, create the actual national heritage site. And so you will, as a council, be getting more information about that uh, as, as they move forward with that, as will all upriver communities um, uh, that are part of the the what would become the heritage area. And so with that, that's that. Great. Thank you. You had something as a follow up. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me to go back. I'd be remiss in just not mentioning the fact that everybody knows we've got a lot of dry weather out there. Mm. Um, today, uh, we uh, fought a five acre fire uh, in the Canby Fire District, and we backed up Malala on a 20 acre fire uh, endangering houses. Uh, and so, uh, and we do have a fire up in the Malala River Basin up above Ripple Brook, which has caused emergency management to go into a level two activation. Uh, so not that it's out of control or anything else, but we do urge people to use extreme caution in regards to thinking about uh, burning around their houses or anything else, uh, discarding of cigarettes, uh, anything that might start a fire because they are moving very, very, very rapidly. So we'd appreciate uh, people pay close attention. And if something does happen, please call 911 early. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, any other 
Comments from council? No? Okay. We'll move into city administrator's business and reporting. Uh, so I don't have um, much to report on tonight. I just wanted to um, also add my congratulations to Chief Tro for his idea um, and and how the Touch a Truck event went last night. Um, I would like to see that be an annual event. And um, I too heard how it could be added to. I heard helicopters. I heard. Oh no. <laughs> I you know it, yeah it could get really big. And I do You're think the, the idea of. Um, <laughs> You know, food trucks would be good. If I may interject, yes. the last time, and I won't name this person's name because they still live in Canby, and, um, but we did have a helicopter situation a number of years ago um, that ended up shredding uh, a number of trees around the high school. Um, so I don't think a helicopter would be the best idea. So. <laughs> Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe on a trailer, but not oh, flying but in. Not flying yeah, this one in. decided to fly in and then fly out and shredded um, a number of trees. So I just expressed some safety concerns around that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to Tyler as Thank well. You. Yeah. Yes, yep. kudos to Tyler. Kudos to yeah. I apologize for my interruption. No problem. Um, you know, we are um, taking feedback um, on that event. So if there is feedback, um, please let us know. So uh, I did want to touch base on um, the fact that I know last night was the $5 night at the cinema. Um, but it was National Night Out, and that is typically on a given night, and I think it's typically on a Tuesday night, the first Tuesday. Yeah, so um, um, that is just going to be a conflict with the cinema. So I thought it was great. I mean, there were people in the cinema, there were people here, there were people mingling all about, and I thought the more the merrier. So that was my take on it. So. Um, on Councillor Patton was just um, where are we at with scheduling another street maintenance task force. Meeting? Where we're at is I'm a slacker and I need <laughs> to get on that. So that's where we're at with that. Okay. <laughs> I is on the list of things. That's all I had. Okay. I almost forgot, if I may. You may. We have some members of a troop here. So I just wanted to say thank you all for coming out tonight and watching the levers of government work. Uh, you're always welcome back to see how all this process works. So thanks for coming out. Well, generally, I have, a, I make it a policy, <laughs> my own personal policy, and I did not do that this evening. So thank you for bringing it up, is I generally ask the, the, a member of the troop that is here to come to the microphone and tell us, um, introduce yourself and who's with you tonight uh, and why you're here so that um, one, you are really uncomfortable and two, the work on your public speaking skills. So does one of you young ladies wanna come up here or both of you, you both can come up, make it a group effort Good evening, ladies. So, yes, what are your names and what troop are you with and what are you here working on tonight? Hi, my name is Bethlehem and I'm from Troop 5194. Okay. My name is Maddie and I'm from Troop 5194. Perfect. And so you're here working on merit badges? Yes. Yeah. And what merit badge are you guys working on tonight? Communication. Communication. Did we do okay? <laughs> Yes. Oh God. <laughs> okay, very good. And you have plenty to, to go back and write about. Okay. Awesome. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for coming tonight and thanks Councilor Patton for bringing that up. So do you, you have any questions that haven't been answered that we could answer for you now? No? No. Hi. Right. We've got all their questions answered. I know. Perfect. Excellent. Right. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> All right, last opportunity for citizen input. Do I once, twice, sold? 
Action review, Ms. Maya. You've approved the consent agenda, adopted ordinance numbers 1627, 1628, and 1629, and approved resolution numbers 1418 and 1419. Perfect, thank you so much. We did our, uh, we had an executive session and a work session this, uh, this evening that started at six, and I'm not seeing anything else on our agenda for this evening, so I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. <laughs> I think we finished too early tonight, but it's all right. Well, uh, you can stay if you want. The, I might. The days have it. We are adjourned. Canby, thank you very much. We will see you in two weeks. Good night, David. Ja Jamie, yes. before you leave, can I chat with you and Eileen? Thank you. Thank you.